Did reason. you know that this is your pants size? Uh, no. So if you... I wish. It's, or half... Uh, let me say this again. It's oh, half of your pants size. To say, let me, this so is if the, you take your jeans, yeah. if you take your jeans off and button them, leave them buttoned, leave them yeah. together like this, and go around your neck, they should meet about perfect. Really? Huh. You'll have to try that when you take your pants I off. I will. You I go can, to a store and you're like, that makes you don't me have feel time to better. try them all. Yeah, I know, because you're like, yeah, oh, twice that, I saw. Yeah. Um, and you, you just leave them button and you do that. And if they meet, they're going to fit you. I mean, you might not love the look. Yeah, it might yeah. be flattering, but they're going to button. They're going to button. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Someone's Random Kitchen in my temporary home this week. I am Brittany Bass, a full-time passenger seat princess and operations manager of Matt Becker Fishing. For those of you who don't know me yet, I am also Matt Becker's girlfriend. He's a professional bass fisherman with Major League Fishing on the Bass Pro Tour, and we are in our second year with that tour. So with this channel and podcast, I plan to bring some of the best wives, fiancés, and girlfriends, even some mothers on, to talk about their lives, their families, their superstitions, because we got them too, and all the back-end goodness that goes into making a tournament season successful. So this is episode six of Random Kitchens. Welcome back everyone. We are currently still filming while we're in South Carolina, but when this episode airs, we will be headed to Birmingham, Alabama for Redcrest or the next event. So check MLF.com to see how everything shook out with stage two here in South Carolina. But today I am super, super excited to introduce to you a very outnumbered, but very, very supportive wife and wife and mother to three fishermen. So please welcome the mother of Mitchell and Marshall and wife of Marty the Party Robinson, Iris Robinson. <laughs> welcome to the kitchen. Thank you. Glad to be here. Appreciate the invite. I'm very excited to have you. So there's definitely a lot to break down today with you having three fishing fishermen yes. um, on a couple of different circuits. So we're going to just start from the beginning real quick. For people who don't know you, who are you? Where are you from? Um, I'm Iris Robinson, and we are from Landrum, South Carolina. Okay, and that is how far from here? Uh, three hours. Three okay, hours from here. upstate. So, We're in the upstate, not the low state. Everybody thinks, oh, you're from South Carolina, you're from yeah. Charleston. No, the right opposite. We're the upstate. <laughs> the upstate. At the mountain. We live in the oh. mountain. Oh. Because you've got mountains in the upstate all the way to the coast. It just gradually steps itself down in South Carolina. That's kind of beautiful. That's mm -hmm. like Virginia, too. We have the Blue Ridge, and it goes yeah. all the way to Virginia Beach. Yeah, nice. it's just like that. I like it. So how many years have you and Marty been fishing on a professional circuit? Um, he went pro in 2007, so I think this is like 18th season. Dang. Something like that. If I don't stop and add it up, 17th, 18th. I think it's the 18th season. And what about your boys? So this is Marshall's first year pro because he's he just turned 20. Right. And, then, um, and so... Uh, yeah, so Mitchell will be Mitchell's first year on the Tackle Warehouse Invitational. Perfect, and he is gearing up to go pro, hopefully. Hopefully so. Yes, fingers plan. crossed, fingers everyone. Crossed. And do you travel full-time with Marty? Um, not full-time. Um, I never really wanted to do homeschool okay. full-time. And so we would just like, um, when the kids were in school, we would take, we'd leave after school on Thursday. Yeah. Just drive to wherever he was at or fly to where he was at, spend the rest of the time make it a long weekend and obviously like the it. summers we would go the entire summer Time, so yeah. we try to go as much as we can though so we would definitely we definitely would uh, go to we would save our sick days yeah use them for fishing I like it mm -hmm. and now are you full-time now that they're both out uh, so Mitchell just finished um, he's he doesn't graduate until May okay but, okay so he's still oh, technically he's in high school. yeah yes, he just turned okay. 18 November so he will, uh, he finished school as far as classes in December. Okay. And then, so this is really my first chance to be full-time travel. Oh. So yes, I'm going to be full-time travel, but not just with Marty. Right. He split the I'm circuit. He's, him and Marshall have each other out here. So I'll probably be with Mitchell more. Yes. Than, oh, I yeah. love that. Yeah. So obviously I wanted this podcast, uh, not only so everyone could get to know the faces and families behind the fishermen, but also so the wives and girlfriends could kind of meet each other if they haven't met yet. Especially on the BPT, there's A and B days, so you may or may not be able to meet everyone in one season. And last year was our first year on the BPT, so kind of due to those A and B days, I really hadn't gotten a chance to like really sit down and meet Iris, which, right. so I'm just as excited to meet you as everyone yeah, you're gonna else. Learning, you're going to be learning stuff about me today. I know. I'm super pumped about it. 
Um, so plan is to dive into Tournament World first, take a little break, and then do you and Marty's story. Okay. And kind of like where y'all came from. So okay. diving into the Tournament World side, um, just to set the stage, kind of like what we said, she is the wife of Marty and the mother to Marshall and Mitchell. And everyone knows... Um, or just so everyone knows, Marty and Mitchell, like she said, are on the Bass Pro Tour. And then Mitchell is fishing the Invitationals, which is the qualifying tour for the Bass Pro Tour. So first, and I asked Matt, and I'll tell you his answer. How did Marty become Marty the Party? You got to tell me. How <laughs> Matt, Matt. I was like, Matt, how did Marty become Marty the Party? And he goes... I guess he likes dancing. And I was like, what kind of dancing, babe? And he was like, I don't know. He probably just like, and I was like, Matt, what? <laughs> he was like, you're going to have to ask. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that, all right. So even back when Marty was, Marty was young, he is, he is a big time dancer, loves to dance and everything. So when he was young, they used to call him Party Marty. Ah. But Dave Mercer didn't know yes. that, you know, so I t Dave Mercer with Bass is who actually named him Marty the Party, and that was because when Marty made his first Bassmaster Classic, we had made a, we kind of made a bet, and I said, if you make the Classic, you need to come out dancing <gasps> on your boat, or I said dance on the stage, I yeah. he turned it into dancing on the boat, <laughs> and so... Uh, he did. He after he made the classic, I said, I meant that. You actually yeah, have, you to, have to do it. <laughs> As he come down, when they stopped the boat, he jumped up and did a whole dance routine oh, on the boat. Was Dave's it like, good? Yeah, it was really good. And then Mar and Dave was like, Marty's bringing the party. It's Marty the party. So that's where that came from. Uh, and so um, and I heard then, he gives good nicknames. Yeah, he did. And then so he danced every classic he made. Oh. It became because everybody's like, you're gonna dance, right? And so. That's oh. where it came from, but uh, he's not what kind like of a, moves? he's not like go to the club party no. or nothing. It's, okay. it's the dancing part. Is it, it like light bulb or like what kind of? No, it's whatever comes to his <laughs> mind. It's a lot. Whatever he's feeling. It's in real his random. Soul. It's a lot of like hip grinding kind of stuff. You know? Oh, <laughs> we actually he's twerking before twerking. We actually back in 2010, we won a dirty dancing contest. <gasps> I yeah. love it. Mm -hmm. Did y'all do the? We didn't do the lift because uh, I'm a. I'm a I'm a bigger girl. Like, I'm, so, I'm kind of hard tall. to lift. Yeah, yeah I'm 5'10". No, and like, it's it's kind of hard. We deal with the water. Hard, yeah, we practiced it in the water, and we could do that, just like that scene. But we never thought it was safe Did y'all do that dance? Oh, yeah. we did. Well, not the – we didn't do the end yeah. scene dance. We do all the stuff in the, the middle. Grinding the grinding one. Yeah. Ah, I like yeah, it. It was like a – Do y'all get down at, like, the parties? We like, do <gasps> get down at the parties. Oh I'm so pumped. We really love to. We don't go clubbing, so we love weddings. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we Ooh, love yeah. weddings, so they we have can, better music anyway. Yeah, we can show off our moves <laughs> at the wedding. <laughs> Do your boys have any nicknames yet? So, um, no. But Marshall is an incredible dancer. <gasps> so like a mini party. Like, but better. Like, um, Marshall can take any dance you can. Th Marty's a freestyle type dude. Yeah. Whatever comes to mind. Marshall, if you have a dance, like you know how everybody watch a TikTok dance yes. and do it, he can do any of it. If he what? sees it a few times, he can repeat it. It's is he on amazing. TikTok dancing? No, because oh. it's just not his thing yeah. to be like he's not Out attention, yeah. like uh, trying to get attention or anything. So it's just it's pretty amazing. Though. I'll show you some videos in a little uh, bit. Yes, it's, please do. <laughs> nobody can Dougie like Marshall can. I have to say. What about so. Mitchell? He's decent, but he's, he's not. He's, yeah, he's a decent dancer. He's not like uh, just let it all let it go. loose like them. But he will dance. Some, he will dance that. What do you think his nickname would be? Oh gosh, I don't even know. Mitchell. Yeah, and we can dive into this later. Their personalities are opposite. I was gonna ask. Yeah, they're very opposite. Mitchell's like high strung. Yeah. Marshall's real low key, laid back. Uh -huh. But they're very the very best of friends. Are you and Marty like that, where y'all's personalities yeah. are exact opposites? Mm -hmm. or? I'm, I'm more high strung and he's laid back. Ah, I like yeah. it. I so like it. I guess I say that Mitchell is Marty as a child and Marshall is Marty now. Because from oh. what I hear, Marty was a little crazy. A little crazy when he's young. I like it. Yeah. I mean, hey, that's where you, where you gotta be to get places and yeah. do things and make things oh, yeah. happen. <laughs> so he settled down and just he's he's real laid back now. But yeah. Good. I think it's just two different personalities of Marty. I like it. So how did they all three get to the levels that they're at? So like with Marty, where did he start? Marty never fished till seventh grade. And in okay. seventh grade, he had a friend that uh, that got him into bass fishing. He had fished, oh. you know, some pond fishing with uh, live worms with his grandpa. Yeah. Up. 
but uh, he didn't come from a family background of fishing, anything like that. He just had a buddy that introduced him to it. So um, that was the first time he ever he used Grabbed artificial baits. Ah. But when he did, he just fell in love with it. And so he just started fishing all he could. So he's a lot self-taught because, yeah. you know, obviously we didn't have YouTube. And um, he would read all the books, you know, that, that different people like the David Fritz books and Kevin Bannon. Back oh, when yeah. they wrote books, you know, back then those anglers and wrote books. the articles were really, really he good read, and detailed. Yeah. He would read, I think you could believe it a little more back then. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, we're a little more secretive these days yeah. with wanting to tell how we catch fish, but he read all the Bassmaster articles, you know, back in the day and all that. And so he's kind of self-taught, which is slow, you know, it's yep. slow to self-teach. Where my boys, um, they had a bigger advantage because I feel like we ran a professional bass fishing school. I, like I didn't that. know we were doing it at the time, but <laughs> looking at it now, it feels like that's what yeah, happened. Yeah, we're doing that. That feels like what happened. We just, the, we kept them on the lake when we would go, like say we were here right now, after the tournament's over, everybody leaves, we stay. We would oh. stay, and as a family, the four of us, go back through it. we go back fishing. And uh, if it's not this, if it's one that's somewhere though, like say the Finger Lakes in New yeah. York, if the term was on Cayuga, we would go to Seneca, yeah. you know, and just do a family fun kind fishing. Kind of expand yeah, a little bit. Yeah, if we get there before or if he didn't make the cut, you know, you don't go back out on the same lake, everybody's still fishing no. on, we go to a nearby a lake. Um, that's what they wanted to do. And people ask me all the time, why do you think they love fishing so much? I think it's because they learned how to catch bass at a young age. They're not going to the lake and just fishing and not catching stuff because yes. you're going to lose interest quick. Oh, yes. But it because they were so young and learned techniques so young, they could catch fish so well that mm -hmm. they just wanted really to catch Really enjoyed more. it. It's like a game. It is. It's like a game. And uh, it's funny you say game. You know how everybody says the forward facing is yeah, kids are good because they have... Yeah, my kids have never owned a gaming system. Yeah. We didn't have a Wii. We didn't have a PlayStation. We've never owned a gaming system. Well, they were playing their own game out there. Yeah. A real life one, which I life. think is better. <laughs> get them yeah. outside. We never, we never, did. Marty always said, if we get them a gaming system, no offense to anybody. No. The buys gaming system. Yeah. They would go to their friends' houses and play. Yeah, and play. Them. But Marty's like, I don't want them to ever have a reason to sit in the house. Yep. And I said, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so our, our family was one that was like an outside family. And if we had too much energy, mom would be like, take a lap, go outside, yeah. <laughs> like run around. Yeah. You guys got, you know, too much going on. We had like an hour of TV time. Yeah. And it was like Saturday morning when cartoons came on. You yeah. know, like oh yeah, they didn't believe in it. Or not believe in it, but they just wanted everyone out. Yeah. Like, and we lived... For 15 years, we lived on a lake, and so they could yeah. come. They would come home from school and go straight and get. In, we had a little John boat with a tiller handle. Oh. Um, not sure that was the safest <laughs> looking back, but they did it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we got their boater's license when they were like 10 and 12, so that yeah. they could go out and do you know, by themselves. And so it was just like a small 500 acre lake at home, and um, we just moved off of there recently. But they learned so much living yeah. on that lake about what fish do all year long. And because it, it's a tough lake, no spotted bass, all largemouth, so it was tough. So it's been it's been good, but that's where they got a lot of it too. The key was keeping them on the water. They literally were on the water. I can't count the days oh, in a year. Good. Even growing up, they were spent on the water. So and then they both did they go high school fishing, college yes. fishing? Okay, so CFL, where how did they? Both of them high school fish. High school fishing's okay. been huge. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's. Um, I love that it's gotten so much bigger. It's like, in re like five years, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's insane. Huge. And in South Carolina, it's super competitive. And um, so Marshall first fished high school like a full season in eighth grade. We kind of okay. believe it or not, we missed the bus on when high school fishing started. You would think we would be the ones yeah, that we're saw fishing. it happen. Yeah, we were fishing. We were gone. We were fishing somewhere else, and all of a sudden, everybody's like, why is Marshall not doing, you know, middle school yeah. fishing? Middle school fishing. I'm like, is that um, can he start right now? And they're like, they can start in sixth grade. And he was in seventh grade when somebody told me this, and I'm like, how did I miss this? Yeah. So he fished maybe one tournament his seventh grade year because it's toward the end of the season when he found out. And so eighth grade, he signed up to fish all of them. And when he would, the, I think, I'm trying to think if it was when he was in ninth grade, I became their high school fishing coach. Oh, that's and awesome. And Mitchell, six, seven, yeah. Like, Mitchell ran their boat? Six. Is that how that worked? No, I mean, I coached the whole high school team. Oh. The Burns high school team. Oh, my God. It's 518 God. in South Carolina. 
And the coach left. He was a great guy. He left and went to another school, left this team with it left them without a coach. Oh no. And it's not like basketball or volleyball where there's a teacher there that is playing on like it's not something yeah. you know, it's not something that a lot of people still are ready to take on. Yeah. It's still that new. Yeah. And so um, there were several dads on the team that was like, Why don't you do this? Because I had been helping bring food and stuff right. and come to all the tournaments in that eighth grade year of Mitchell's. So I've coached it for six years. And so Mitchell's senior year, I turned it over to another guy, another a dad on the team. He does a fantastic job. I kind of handpicked him because yeah. he's been already a captain, a boat captain, and he's been great. I'm like, he's going to really – I wanted to give it over to somebody that really cared about it. Yes, and would take going. care of it. And so he's done great. So I haven't really coached – this is my first year not coaching. Oh, my him. gosh. That's awesome. So, and they never seemed to mind that their mom was the fishing coach. No. You know? Marty helped a I lot. Feel, I was about to say, I feel like you have been around it enough, yeah. know enough about it. It's not like you're yeah. just someone's mom coming into it. You yeah. are. That's right. What you know, the party's know. wife. Like, you know yeah. what's going on. Well, you since, fished. Like, right. And since then, there's been several mom coaches for these teams. I, I like think it. it's kind of like everybody's like. Yeah, Missy said she helps with Missy hers did. too. Yeah. yeah, Missy did too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I like it. I think it's awesome. Mm -hmm. So they went from high school to college, or Mitchell's going, is he going to college? No, I'll tell you what, did. Marshall got a scholarship to go to college, and about two weeks before a move-in date, because you know, Marshall's straight still in the middle of college age right now, right. he just turned 20. 20. And so right before um, time to move in, he said, because um, we have a lot of great colleges in South Carolina, yeah. fishing-wise, um, you know, you got Lander and Erskine right there, and he was going to go to Erskine. And so... He said, this is not what I want to do. And oh. uh, we know we have a plumbing business yeah. as well, which is, is successful. And he was like, um, I just want to fish. And to be honest with you, college is great for plenty of people. He was super prepared. He had already taken several class, uh, college classes, honor student, really great. So it's not, I've had people say, oh, it wasn't meant for some people. I'm like, no, that's yeah. not why he didn't go. Yeah. It's not that he wasn't prepared to go to college. He's like, I'm probably going to work in the plumbing industry because yeah. trades are great yes trades uh, are great. they are amazing and they're yeah. very underrated yeah. like dad just owns because, a crane and trucking company so yeah definitely get right so get just, your cdl <laughs> really yes, <that's, laughs> just because you can go to college doesn't mean you need it mm -mm. and so he's like i already know that i've got and he had been plumbing anyway with marty through the summer you yeah. know how you do growing up he said, so I don't, if I go to college, I'm going to get out and probably still be a plumber because yes. it's still probably where the best opportunities for me are. Yeah. He said, uh, I really just want to try to make it pro. And um, we're like, well, that's fine as long no, as you have a plan. I like and it. And so he decided not to go. And naturally, little brothers come along like, I like this plan. Yes. And so Mitchell kind of has the same plan. Matt didn't go to college. Um, I mean, he knew he wanted to go pro, like, from a very young age, and, yeah. like, all of his ducks were absolutely yeah. pointed in that basket, and, I mean... It's working. It's yeah, working I was about to say, <laughs> I went to college, and I Me have too. a degree, but I am, like, not really using it. I'm using more of the experience I had, which, obviously, my career, like, yeah. came from my degree, um, so... I, there is need to go to college for certain things, for certain but people, yeah. get coming out, I'm like, oh... I mean, there's so much debt. Like, I'm still paying on school that yeah. now, you know, yeah. it is. I went, and I'm an accountant, and so I am using yeah, you're what degree. I learned. But for us, you yes. know, I don't work for somebody else. I work Great. for us. Yeah, I was about to say, that's mine, like, directly correlates with now what I'm doing with Matt. Yeah. So it, it yeah. works out. But, okay, so did Marty always want to be a professional fisherman? Or did he, like, from seventh grade? Yeah, from seventh grade. Uh, he started watching, back then, I think everything was on TNN and oh, stuff like, you know, yes. he, he started watching it. And yes, when I, I started dating him when I was 16 and he was like, um, I want to be a professional fisherman. He's a little older than me. And I said, they have that? <laughs> and he said, yeah, I didn't have that lot. You know, yes. I didn't see any of that. Those pro fishing, Bassmaster on TV. Yes. I didn't see any of that. And so he told me that right when I started dating. We're like, all right, well, that sounds good. Yeah. That sounds good. Whatever. We'll do that. We'll do that. We'll just be together. Sign Whatever. me up. Yes. <laughs> I'll do it. I'm here for it. No, I love it. <laughs> what would he say is his favorite moment so far of his career or biggest high point? Gosh, that's kind of hard because... Actually, if you don't mind, can you back me up? Take me through. So he was started in 07 yeah. with the elites. Yes. And then did he do FLW before BPT? He did. No, he fished a few. You remember when they had those FLW Opens that you could jump in? He fished a few of those. But he, if we back it up 
the first thing he did do was BFLs, though. Ah, okay. Yeah, so okay. that is where he got his first start and gotcha. you know, work in that direction. Yes. He did BFLs, won the points in, you know, like the Savannah oh. River BFLs in 2006. And uh, because Marty didn't go pro until 33 because financially, yeah. you know, we didn't grow up. We both didn't grow up with, you know, I know people, you know, will say, oh, my gosh, your daddy buys you this, your daddy buys you yeah. that. Well, um, we do do yeah. things like that for our boys because we like seeing them on the water. It's yep. a perfect place for them to be. But Matt he always have, says, if I had kids, you're telling me I wouldn't give them it. Yeah. You know, give them what we need, yeah. what they need. Like. But for Marty, he didn't have that ability. Somebody wasn't able to do that yeah. for him. So um, we had to work our way up to being able to afford the boat and the truck and everything. Because yeah. he worked for, he's been a plumber forever, but he worked for other companies. You know, you don't make your money that way no, as well. You gotta so your when own. Marshall was born, we uh, opened our own plumbing business so that I could stay home with him. Oh, That's what we did because okay. we both worked outside the home. And I'm like, I want to stay home with him and raise him. But uh, he said, well, the only way we're going to do that is if I start my own business. So yep. that's when we did that. And so that was when he was 30. <clears throat> and so about 2000, he had always fished BFLs here and there, here and there. But 2006 was the first time he'd ever fished the whole season. Gotcha. Because it was only time, I mean, he could get enough time to work off because he was his own he boss. He was his own boss, yeah. And that's how that kind of got into that. So he ended up, <clears throat> he won the points that year in 2006 and he also fished um, the Everstarts because he yep. wasn't he was like I'll either get into FLW or yep. I'll get into bass it yep. didn't matter which, which one he just wanted to fish yep. pro and so he fished the Everstart series back then yep. is what it was called it's the Toyota That's which like is the Toyota the, with the Costas now it's the Toyota yep. and then he and he fished the Bassmaster Opens because 2006 is when the Elite Series formed and you could finally get in the Opens because they weren't so full ah. you weren't on a waiting list okay because so they him, separated it out a little they bit they separated out a little bit so you could have the Opens that's when the Opens started like that that's when hmm. the whole break 2006 was when you had the Opens in the Elite Series okay it's still kind of what it is to this day right so in the BFLs he's a good bit older than this is how it lets you know how long he's been rooming with Casey so in 2006 they decide to travel together him and Casey and Jason Williamson that still fishes yeah. the Elite, they all fished the the Savannah River BFLs, the Everstart Series, and the Bass Opens. Oh. And Jason actually fished the Northern Opens as well. Yeah. So they were all determined to get in. They all kind of looked up to Marty. They were young. You know, they're Both of Casey yeah. Ashley. Casey's and Jason. ten years younger than Marty, and Jason's about maybe seven years younger than Marty. So that you know, Marty was there. Yeah. Marty's like. Not scared to travel. Okay? Yes. None of them had already left South Carolina. <laughs> and Mark's like, we got this. Yes. We're going. We're traveling. I think those Pack opens, it up, boys. Let's go. Yeah, the Opens went to like Texas. They went to just places Everywhere. none of them had been. Yeah. And uh, with Marty, Marty was grown. Okay, he was 33. And so he's grown. Yes. They're in their early 20s. So anyway, so they take off. And they all three made it pro that year, which is unheard of. That all, is crazy. It was crazy. And that they all crazy. made it a different way. Like, so... That you know had to be in the you had to be in the top ten I mm -hmm. think in points to make it that year, and so I told you Jason fished the Northern Opens yeah. as well. He made it through the Northerns. Casey made it through the Southerns. Marty finished eleventh, and so it was like, oh my oh, gosh, no. he's going to be the one out. Yeah. Well, they had a wild card to where the guys that didn't requalify for the elites fished against like eleventh through twenty fifth in the yeah. Opens, and could and those make top it. ten went to the elites. Marty finished like. Third in oh that my so god! He really ended up doing well because they gave you ten thousand dollars towards your entry fees that Dang. year to qualify when you qualified that yeah. way. So anyway, all was well in the world. All three of them made it. They all went on the elite series. So that's Yay. what that's how Marty made it pro. And then he was with the elites mm. for what fifth until uh, twenty nineteen. Okay, 2019. Yeah. awesome! Oh my gosh! Yeah. So it's been it's been a fun career. We um uh and then the boys just um. They just, are we, you may go into that, how the boys you can, became yeah. pro. Are we, going, are we ready for that? So, you know, <laughs> they, Marshall didn't decide to go to college, so he got in the Toyota series, which he kind of to work his way yep. up. Never fished any BFLs or anything, just jumped because you had high school. Yeah. So he fished two Toyota series while he was still in high school, and that, that really is probably why he didn't go to college. That was our bad because yeah. – we got in. He got that. In his got head. in. He did head. pretty well. Did, yeah, you yeah. start. And he's like, <laughs> start turning the know? tournament winnings over, yeah. and you're like, I could make this happen. Maybe if he had finished especially 200. Toyotas, because the the rate of return on a Toyota series is like, ooh, yeah. Especially if you make championship, 
It's all all above board. Yeah, they are good. They are so good. <clears throat> so, so if well. he had ma maybe finished 200th, that might would have. But yeah. since he did well, he's like, oh. <laughs> so he jumped in Toyotas the first year out of high school, and then made it to the um, Invitationals, and then rookie of the year. Yes, so, I know. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. I saw plenty of pictures and saw, I mean, obviously we, yeah. we room with Drew Gill and they were like battling it oh, out yeah. at the end. Oh, yeah. So we, we were following it extremely closely, but congratulations. Yeah. That, was that was a stressful excellent. year. It was, wasn't it ounces too? Like they uh, were like, neck they ended up the whole year. Yeah. They ended up five points. It was a five point difference. At the oh year, my I gosh. Yeah. So that That's last awesome. tournament. Was super stressful because Drew had a really great, like a top. What did he finish fifth in the last tournament? That at the last tournament of the Invitationals that year, and so Marshall had a tiny cushion of maybe twenty points coming yeah. in, and Drew basically earned fifteen of them back, back. in that event. So thankful for a little cushion going to that final Dang. tournament. Dang, because oh they both because Marshall finished in the twenties. Neither one of them did bad yeah. in the last tournament, but it was, yeah, it was tight. So tight. I love that though. It's it tight. Th those. Those battles are just as exciting yeah. as like each tournament yeah. battle, I think. What's fun with that, you know, in the beginning of the year when they start naming who to watch, who to mm -hmm. watch, Drew and Marshall were not. On the heads. Yeah, that wasn't who they were watching. I love the underdog. Yeah, the underdog story's it. fun. <laughs> I'm like, Marshall, they're not even talking about I you. No, just, just sneak a attack, babe, sneak attack. That's what I, That's what I tell saying. Mitchell right now. I'm like, they're not even talking no. about you. No, <laughs> Just make them. Make them talk Ma yeah. about you. You have to make them talk yeah. about you. Make them learn your name mm -hmm. and then remember it yep. forever. I know. It's awesome. So what is, oh, sorry. What was his biggest high or like favorite moment of his career? I kind of backtracked a little all, to, yeah, 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 to find out how he got here because I, I yeah. really didn't know, honestly. Yeah. So I would say the, his first, you know, when you're fishing, obviously the first is when you just make it, when you just make it pro in general. I mean, that's. Um, I was singing at a church that night. You and sing? It, yes. I Sorry sang. to random tangent yeah. again, but I, I sang. sang. And so, and he called me. He's like, I did it, I did it. So that's when he made pro. But I think two of the most exciting moments, number one, was making your first Bassmaster Classic. You know, That's huge. It's so huge because that's, you know, that was just what you're working for all this time. Yeah. And then, but he never won a Bassmaster Tournament. Came so close, you know, just near misses. Dang. But then, um, so when he won... The Major League Fishing Cup event. Yes. That was, I mean, that's going to be, you know, the, you're huge, you know, you're huge Go win. down in history. Yeah, a huge win. You know, so that's probably the two moments I would say. Would be what about you? Ones. What is his career so far? What is, actually, let's do his and Marshall's. Okay. Your favorite moment. I think my favorite moment for Marty was just making it pro in yeah. general. Because he was 33. It's not like, oh, you're doing it when you're 20. Yeah. Like, it's getting younger and, and younger. And you have time. Yeah. yeah. Because I saw the process he went through. It is literally starting from the bottom mm -hmm. and working your way up. He did have to buy his own boat. You know, he's driving around. Like, if you back up to what he was driving, you know, he used boats and used trucks and yeah. stuff to do it with. And um, working full-time. And he still works full-time. Working full-time. Paying your own way. You know, doing anything you can to get there. And then um, being 33 years old. You've already got your wife and kids. And then having that moment happen. Having it all come to it. It makes you appreciate it more. Yeah. No offense to anybody that's 20 that wins a tournament, but you don't know. Yeah. You don't know if you didn't struggle to get there. Yeah. You're enjoying it and you can appreciate it, but you can't appreciate it as much as if you had had to do that to get there. Yeah. So, yeah, just that moment of making it pro. It's not even the wins. It's not even the, yeah, it was just making it's it. It's like all of everything in your life finally, yeah. like, hit a point. Yeah. yeah. No, I like it. I love those stories. I, I mean... I like passionate people, and yeah. I think passionate people stem from struggle, or I feel like yeah. more passionate people stem from struggles. Yeah, you do. All right, so if you need to answer it, you can. <laughs> it's okay. We, we <laughs> tell you that through. And I was on the, um, I was doing the podcast with Katie, which y'all are gonna watch next week. And um, their house was like kind of lighting up with flames a little bit, and yeah. so we, like Dylan was on the phone. I was like, please answer it. Like it is totally fine. <laughs> Okay, so, um, because we kind of hopped around a little bit here, so let me see. Y'all's biggest challenge in his fishing career, and how did you overcome it? Uh, work, running a business. So, he has Having a full-time plumbing business, and, you know, they're blowing your phone up when you're out of town. Yeah. And you're trying to balance that. You're trying to 
compartmentalize. You're trying to keep them two separate, but you can't. No. Keep it separate because it don't cut off just because you had a tournament to go to. And so it's just, you know, it's a lot of stress. I think it has hurt him. Like, it's been fantastic, obviously. Because, to have both. Because you have a secure, guaranteed job yeah. waiting on your home that you're in complete control of. But unfortunately, you are in complete control of it. So um, if anything goes wrong and you're in Texas, I mean, yeah. it's a problem, you know. So Does he answer calls out on the, like, does he have to do work? Yeah, see, you can't, they let you do that now. Oh, the, yeah. No, but I, like, but in the past, you, you know, there were, there's other times in the past, like, that they the elites, that you're not allowed to take personal calls on the water and stuff. So... Uh, they would come to me. They would feel oh, me like shoot. it better if he gets those calls. Yes. But, um, so, yeah, he has had to just flat out answer straight up. Yeah. I mean, you know, calls about jobs on the water. Mm -hmm. He has to do it sometimes. That's been the hardest thing. Um, it's a blessing. We're glad to have it. But it's really hard to have to do that at the same time. Yeah, shift your mind. You're, mm -hmm. like, focus on fishing, and then you yeah. have to, you know, stop and Yeah, start. during those 15-minute breaks sometimes, he will totally stop, call, and completely, like, especially um, with Marshall – Oh, is it home doing a job? Like, obviously not now because he's going to be here. It, yeah. But last year, Marshall will be at home doing a job, and Marty and him be talking about what's going on in the 15-minute break. Yeah. So you can't be tying lines and focusing it if you're – so yeah. I think it's it had to take his focus away. I know it's hurt him as far as – you know, I'm sure it's taken some points away. Yeah, Yeah. depending on the event. So that's the hardest thing, to, to balance the, the job with the job, yeah. the two jobs. No, that makes sense. And then um, – we kind of talked about this. Both of your boys do want to fish professionally, ultimately. That is their goal. Yeah. They, yeah? That's I their love decision. It. We never forced it on them. No. Um, they would want to go fish and stuff. We never, like, put them in the boat. This is what we're doing. This is what you're doing. Um, it's not going to work if you do that. No. You know, it has to be what they want. So yeah. it's both of them. That's They developed a love for it through, through all of our life. We, I mean, not that we didn't want that to happen. We definitely. Yeah. We definitely you're hoping. <laughs> I don't, I mean, I don't know if we're smart for that or what, because, you know, I think, you know, this is a great life. It's it a is. lot, but it is it's a, a great lot. Life. Yeah, I mean, I feel, in a way, I feel bad for them because I don't think, I mean, I hope I don't say something too negative here. I don't think pro fishing's in its prime. Yeah, no, I mean. It's harder than ever. Yes. To make it all the way around. Yeah, I think so, too. It's I, seen better days. Maybe it'll see better days again. But yeah. It's, it's a little bit of a struggle right now. I'm hoping it's, like, all a, all a cycle because I do think yeah. they work so hard. Like, I, I hope that everything on the back end that they really can't control kind of yeah. comes to fruition a little bit. But Yeah. A lot of that's just the economy. I mean, yeah. that's what's driving, I think, pro fishing to be such a struggle right now. Yeah. And it's across... Um, I know MLF gets a lot of negativity, but it's not fair to give MLF all the negativity because no. it's happening to all the circuits. Yeah. They're yeah. all having to deal with inflation and everything and sp split and sponsor dollars and everything. Yeah. I think we just take the biggest brunt of the negativity for it. I would say that, or um, some people are the loudest about it. Yeah. That's right. That makes sense. But so when you guys knew that they wanted to become professional fishermen, what was y'all's like biggest or first piece of advice kind of going into it? The backup plan. Yep. The just keep on learning your trade. Just keep on learning how to plumb. This business is always going to be here. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, even that. if toilets start flying, yeah, I mean, you're going to need somebody. Yeah. You're going to need a plumber. <laughs> See, okay? Yeah. Like literally yeah. all underground piping, unless they yeah. figure out a way to put that in the cloud somehow. Yeah. yeah you're going to, I mean, it's, it's a good thing to have, you know, there's, and I've had a lot of anglers say it to me, at least you have, at least Marty has a backup plan, at least this, that, and the other. And, um, and now that's a choice. Yeah. You know, anybody can have a backup plan. It's yeah. the choice you have. We just didn't put all our eggs in one basket because we didn't start fishing pro at, as a, a kid, as a young person. We didn't. He was already. How did, sorry to back up a little. How did he become a plumber? Did he, his dad have that trade? No. Or how it did was he find it? My family. Oh, um, cool. Uh, when he, well, I know we'll get into later how me and him met. Yeah. But, um, he worked a summer with my uncle. My uncle has a plumbing business. Oh, okay. He worked a summer with my uncle, and he had been, they had had a layoff at the plant that Marty worked at. And uh, he worked a summer with my uncle plumbing, and then he had a, a his best friend's company was hiring a plumber. So Marty just slid on that. I like he it. He probably didn't know near as much about plumbing as he said he did in that yeah. interview. 
That's okay, because that guy ended up loving Marty. I was going to say, Marty it's learned okay. on the job. He learned very fast. Sometimes you just got to yeah. fake until you make it in he the faked. interview, and then you can learn on the job. Yeah. He faked until he made it. He's like, yes, I absolutely <laughs> know a lot. Yeah, I have redone an entire bathroom. <laughs> I have redone a whole house, 20 yeah. houses. He had the faith in himself that he could do it, and then he yes. lied through the rest of it. He was like, I can do this. I know it. So... It was good. No, I love that. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the most important off the water skill is that they need to learn? So the backup plan is good, but as far as the fishing advice, like relative to the actual fishing, I feel like that's like the smallest portion. You need to have an act and a yeah. passion and all of that. But for the career, what do you think the biggest like off the water thing they can do is? Well, I think um, me and Marty talk about this and everything in relationships and work is don't be lazy. You just have to have a work ethic that just won't quit. Like you just that. have to want to work at stuff. At anything you do, you have to want to succeed yeah. at anything, not just fishing. Um, so you just have to really not be lazy. That's Marty's favorite thing to say. Don't be lazy. Like That's that. what he tells me all the time. Don't yes, be lazy. Don't be lazy. <laughs> in everything. Don't be lazy. Do it well and right the first yeah. time. <laughs> I like yeah. it. If you're going to do it, why waste your time not yeah. doing it, well, not and doing it hard? If you don't do it right or don't do it to the full extent, you're going to redo it anyway. Yeah. It's going to take twice as long. Now, so. if Marty is on a plumbing job, he's bad about letting you figure it out. So mm -hmm. he'll go in there, I need these piped together. This has got to do this, and that's what I want that to do. And this is how he handles it. If he comes back in the room and you've piped this intricate system and it's wrong, he'll say, cut that out and start over and walk back out. I think that's the whole do it right the first time yeah, thing. Yeah, do it right the first yeah. time. And if you don't know how to do it the right the first time, then you probably should ask questions ask. rather than do all that. And I think that's why he tells people to cut it back out. He's like, you didn't ask. You yeah. just rolled with it, and you did it wrong, so now you can redo it. Yeah. He's really kind of, he's more hardcore at plumbing with people than anything else. And I was about to say, he yeah. seems so, like, yeah. mellow and soft-spoken yeah. 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 otherwise. He is. But, but I like that, though. I think a lot of people struggle to ask for help. Yeah. So teaching them to ask for help yes. like that, I think, is good. Marty, I call it, he's a jack of all trades, a master of a couple. Yeah, yeah. I like it. And, um, hey, at least a couple. A couple. <laughs> he's, I say he's a master of plumbing, a master of fishing. Yes. So, I mean, he's a, he, but he can do a little bit of everything. But he will never sit there and be too scared to call. Like when he wants to build something, he'll call who he knows that he thinks does can that do the it. best. And he'll give them a list of questions. And everything and then he'll go do it he doesn't just try to guess because he don't have the pride to ask he will yeah. literally he will do his research and ask anything I like and, he it. Can, and then he takes it and and can apply it so he's not afraid to ask yeah i like it because then the job is done correct yeah. the first time he's <laughs> one of those guys that would stop and ask for directions yeah <laughs> so what is your favorite part about this tournament fishing world in this crazy life and um, has it changed over the years, like since your boys have grown up and stuff. Yes, there used to not be all this negativity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's really, social media, yeah. while it can be great to keep um, in touch with your friends mm -hmm. that live across the country and all that, it lets people hide behind their screen and say the ugliest thing they can possibly say yeah. that you never would have had to listen to yeah. before social media. It lets people unite and all be negative together. And so rather than be happy, I think social media makes a lot of people miserable. Yeah. And uh, it's just hard to read. I'm a comment reader, and I probably shouldn't be because, mm -hmm. you know, it'll drag you down if you yeah. start reading comments. But it really depresses me, the attitude. Yeah. That's another thing we tell the, the boys to keep a positive attitude because nothing's going to hurt your fishing, working, anything other than being negative. Yeah. So um, I think the negativity, unfortunately, has gotten to people through the years. That's what I see changing. I think it was a lot happier. But, like, I think that's – um, in social media fault. I for think sure. it, it makes opinions heard that probably should have never seen the light of day. Yeah. That's also why I yeah. wanted to do this because I, I feel like um, somehow the industry has gotten to a point where they forgot to see the anglers as humans. Yeah. They like just see them as like yeah. on the TV. And so I like really wanted people to like meet yeah. the family. Like they are humans, they are people, they have struggles, like yeah. exciting times, all the things. And so I was like, what can I do to like you know, try to like yeah. let people meet the family. <laughs> like, perfect example. They're humans. <laughs> perfect example. Marshall is honestly the kindest person ever. He's just the best kid and uh, not so much of a kid anymore. But I was reading through the comments one day and somebody put, I really like Marty, but I don't think I like his son very much. 
I know. Like, you don't even know him. He doesn't know him. I know. I've told I people thought... in the comments before to, like, come and meet me at yeah. a tournament before they talk negative about me. Because yeah. I'm like, I really, I just want to, like, shake your hand and say hello. Like, I, if you're going to talk about me, that's fine. But meet, like, know me. Yeah. You know? Like, come and meet me first. Yeah, we were just so <laughs> shocked. Marshall thought, I know you say that. I'm like, babe. Yeah. yeah. They just say whatever. They just that say you it. didn't like the way you look. Yeah. There's something about your look that they, you didn't like. I mean, yeah. we had people when Marty did dance at the classic. Such a fun moment. You wouldn't believe the private emails we would get. Why would yeah. you do that? That's ridiculous. We're like, why do you care? Why do you care? And like, <laughs> my my soul told me to dance, okay? Yeah. So like, I'm dancing. I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy. This is my happy dance. Yeah. Right. So, so far, what has been the hardest part of all three of them fishing? <clears throat> Trying to organize it all. Um, I have all three of their emails on my phone. So when they're needing to send in W-9s, contracts, and all that stuff, I monitor all that for them. Uh, financially, keeping three, which Marshall pays his own way. Um, Mitchell's still obviously just, under y'all. He's yeah, still at graduate high school. high school, so um, so I've still got you know the financial deal. Like what we did for Marshall's when he started fishing, we kept Marty's boat for an extra year instead of selling oh, okay. boat. And so he's in his own boat deal now. So by the time he got in his own boat deal, it's time to keep a boat for Mitchell. Yeah. So we've been keeping boats for years. You know, you can't sell those boats and make your. That's right. how you make your money off your boats at the end of the year. So we're, you know, we're boat poor. Boat poor. Boat poor. <laughs> three so boat poor. Just keeping, so basically financial and just coordinating all that is the hardest thing with all three of them fishing. Yeah, I can't even imagine. I, I know trying to get like Airbnbs for him with four yeah. people or three trucks and boats or four trucks and boats is already a nightmare. The parking is the nightmare. Yes. Getting the park. You can find the houses. Yes. You just can't find the parking. Nope. Yep. And, yep. or if you can, they're like an hour out of town or 45 yeah. minutes out of town, yeah. which doesn't really work all the time. Do y'all all, all stay together for the tournaments? Yes. Um, <clears throat> Marty and Casey and Jonathan and Kevin Van Dam all been rooming together the whole time for the Bass Pro Tour. Um, with Kevin retiring, Marshall just kind of slid in that spot, so there's still four. There's still four fishermen. Yeah. And then um, for Mitchell's group, does he travel with people as well? Yes. I've been going to those, but he also travels with uh, another young guy. I guess they're the two youngest on the trail named Alex from back home. Oh. And then oh, he yeah. runs. I think I saw. Was his mom with you? Yeah, we did that. Yeah, we yeah. did the epic. Yes. Mother, his name. We did the <laughs> epic, <laughs> epic mother son trip. It yes. Was funny. I don't know that the boys wanted it to be that way. They were <laughs> like, had fun with it. We had fun. They were like, "Can we just go? Like, and do our thing?" I'm like, "You're not even old enough to run a hotel room. What you gonna do?" <laughs> so anyway, we made them let us go. But anyway, it, we had a lot of fun. They had fun too. But um, when we're not there, they'll room with uh, Laker Howell, yeah, Andrew okay. Nordby, and um, Ethan Green. Very nice. So look good. That's a good. Yeah, that's a good group. Yeah, <laughs> and they can rent the hotel. <laughs> yeah, and Nordby's They're thirty. Enough, yeah. Nordby's thirty, so we have an adult in the house yes. because laker's an adult but you know he's mr fun and uh ethan's an adult they're you know they're more like just yeah. uh, we need somebody super Actual responsible. responsible yeah and he has twins That's right Nordby so has the twins, yeah so he's, he's gotta be semi-responsible yeah he's a dad now so he's gotta be responsible <laughs> you guys gotta get him those new balances get him some dad shoes yeah. so yeah. y'all's typical tournament routine or do you have a typical tournament routine like superstitions or things that you do mm -hmm. every day before a tournament do you like no, yeah, wear I go something around, funky? No, or? I go around. Is your batteries charged? Have you got yeah. your boat plug? Did y'all stop at the gas station boat plug. to get gas? Did yeah. Do y'all have anything to eat? Did you, do you want me to go get ice? That's my typical routine. They're all laid back and like, yes. whatever. <laughs> Nobody's superstitious. Um, Casey is, but not anybody in my family. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so we're not typical. We're very extremely spontaneous. Yeah, I like it. There's nothing typical about the Robinsons. No, that's good. Then we don't know what we're doing tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So dynamic at home, do the boys take advice from Marty and you and like vice versa? Or do they kind of have their own styles and like separate it all out? So they all like to fish differently, believe it or not. They're all, if you, that's kind of if awesome. You throw them, if you only knew how far apart Marty and Marshall fish on lakes we go to. It's so <laughs> funny when you look on my, I, I follow them on Life360, yeah. try to guess what they're doing. And uh, I, I swear I can, I feel like I can figure out what you they're know, doing. You know, yeah. And, um, but they're never hardly next to each other. Or then they'll end up not knowing it and be right on top of each other, not even know it. It's That's so fun to watch. Fun. But most of the time it's like one's here and one's yes. there. And uh, Mitchell's right opposite. They all have different strengths uh, that they like to do. You know, Marty taught them everything he needed to teach them. But then they hit a point where they could turn around and teach him stuff too. Mm -hmm. And especially with forward facing because... Um, 
you know, they come along without it. They, I think they're fortunate to come along when they did with both. Right. And so... Um, I think so, too. That makes them, like, yeah. so dangerous. We talk about yeah. it all the time. Like, that group that, like, knows how to fish with and without it, uh -huh. like, they're going to be... I mean, they are lethal. Yeah. There and so they're using it They're using it and combining it yep. with what they already know. Um, and so for That's Marty, smart. Marty didn't embrace forward facing quite as well as they did. Because the, the older generation just doesn't. They know too much. Yeah. They know too many things. And it fished a totally different way their whole life they're not as open to that change so they literally take marty out and do like forward facing stuff little seminars <laughs> little seminars oh yeah. i like it i they mean do. that's kind of perfect they really do because like he's beyond really much teaching them I mean, he's already taught them yeah all the old school stuff yeah. they know it they grew up around it their whole life so now they're turning around teaching them some stuff i like it i like the mesh of it yeah like i don't think people understand that you how well you can use it in cahoots mm -hmm. with everything else yeah. you know um, they think it's like just out deep, but it's really not. It's kind of no. cool. No. And it's really addicting. <laughs> um, okay. So what do you think their strengths are? Like if they had a favorite way to catch them, do you know what each of those are? Uh, Marshall loves shallow water power fishing. Okay. I just don't know these days, you know, you can, you can get in trouble doing it. Mm -hmm. You can get in trouble in doing it. But he does like forward facing. He does like it, but um, like he really um, wanted to come here and be able to just. So he's actually mixing it up though. He's doing. He's having to do a little bit of both. Yeah. But um, Mitchell has embraced fully the forward facing, forward -facing. sonar, probably because he's just a little bit younger than mm -hmm. them. He still can do both. He still can do both. Um, so I think he deep water fishing is a strength of Mitchell's. I really think it is, and uh, and shallow water is a. Marshall loves. Um, dirty water. Mm. Mitchell, Mitchell also to be clear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're so opposite. That is opposite. And so Marty likes both. I would say. Uh, I would say Marty likes clear water yeah, better than better. dirty water. Um, they're probably gonna watch this and say, "What is she talking about?" <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I think I'm pretty close on that. Um, Marty is. Uh, Marty is. Uh, he slows down and picks stuff apart. Marshall more. Marshall and Mitchell. Mitchell's a run and gun. Because yeah. like I said, he's high strung, so he's. Yeah. Marty no Marshall bite, let's go. No bite, let's go. Let's go. Let's keep moving. Yes. You find fish that way. Sometimes you miss fish that yes, way. Yeah, sometimes you miss fish. So they're all different, believe it or not. You would think they would all fish the same, and they yeah. don't. I like it. Yeah. I think that's good, though. Yeah. It's kind of healthy. You, like, find your own little path, you know. Yeah. So our last guest asked, um, if you could change one thing about tournament life right now, fishing or non-fishing related, so the home part or the actual on the water part, what would it be? For me personally, just in general. Like, Either. Um, I think I already touched on that. I think I would just try, I would just wish everybody would just have a more positive mm -hmm. attitude. The yeah. negativity, I get caught up in just it letting it bother me too much. I'm just not a negative person. Yeah. I don't try to live that way. And it bothers me for people to just constantly. When we took a break while ago, I read a comment that I was like. Again. And it's somebody that should not be commenting some of the stuff that he's saying, but I'm like. I just don't get it. Yeah. I don't get why you wake up in the morning and get on the get on the internet and say, let's see what hateful stuff I can spit out of my mouth today. So I just would like to see people be more positive and be more appreciative of what they're getting to do. Yeah, agreed. And from your perspective, what makes a successful angler? So, if you had to pick like one character. Yeah, I'm going to go back to the, 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 the work ethic. Somebody that's going to work super hard. Yeah. Um, you know, you hear people all the time saying, oh, it's the hardest working man in bass fishing. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you can look at it a bunch of different ways. I look at Marty, what he does is kind of, I mean, he's balanced and running, running a whole company. Yes. He work, When he gets home, like if when we leave here, um, if he doesn't make the cut today, we'll get up in the morning and go home. He'll probably be on a job tomorrow, tomorrow. night. Tomorrow. He'll probably go to it because we're close yeah. to home. We're three hours from home. He will end up on a job tomorrow. Dang. Um, so I just think working hard is some um, making you successful. Yeah. It, whether it's not really... Obviously, you can look at how many wins you have, but are you enjoying? He's enjoying what he's doing. Yeah, you know, so that makes you still successful. have a passion for the sport. Yeah, I think making you make successful is if you're really happy mm -hmm. at what you're doing. If you're just really happy, I think so too. We yeah. talk about that all the time, especially with like the negative stuff. Yeah, he's like, don't you? You have to let it all go because if we're happy, if we're successful, if we are, you know, having the passion, still love to be here, yeah. love to be after it, like. 
no one else matters. Everything else goes away. And me, I'm over here like protector. So I just, yeah. I really get too involved probably in that. Yeah, and I, Matt's over here like, I just like catching bats. Like I just want to yeah. catch bats. Okay, last question. We're going to take a quick break. So if we had a WAGS Wives and Girlfriends fishing tournament, <laughs> which wife or girlfriend do you think would win? <laughs> this is good. Let me tell you. You know, let me just tell you. Can we make this a team tournament? Because yeah. <laughs> Let me just say, I don't know if how long you followed along with what we've done, but uh, me and Robin Howell. Thank you. Okay, I have been waiting. <laughs> Someone told me that y'all like crushed it on this like women's league or something, but no one told me. Like, it so, went into it. Yes, she, I did not fish a women's league. She did okay. fish the women's bass match yes. league. Okay, and like Cheryl did from Lawrence, right? Yeah, like all of yeah. Okay, and so she did do that. That really, you know, that kind of. They don't, that's not as much. That yeah. was a bigger thing back then than it is now, unfortunately. But anyway, so she did do that. But what me and her have done, we like to take credit for Laker and Marshall's success, and Mitchell now too. And, and Oakley's should. a good fisherman, but he, he gave it all up to go play basketball. But anyway, so what we did the whole time they were growing up, while the guys were fishing, we went fishing. With the it boys. was the boys. It would be me and Robin yes. against Oakley and Mitchell, the youngest, <gasps> Laker and Marshall, the oldest. And we would go and we rented motorboats, we rented kayaks, we bank fished, just whatever we yes. could do, wherever we were at. I feel like me and Robin did pretty good. I think so. Like, we beat them a lot. <laughs> and like they would poach us, you know, if we were catching them, here they'd come. They'd come over your they hole. They'd come over our hole, especially Oakley. Wait, so y'all yeah. were in a boat and they were in a boat? Yeah. Oh my God. We would, all, awesome. we would go rent boats wherever we went. We've rented boats everywhere you can imagine. That is so, so awesome. And we catch us some fish. You'll have to scroll back far enough to yeah. see it. But, um, so you so would crush I'd it. I'd like to think me and Robin were going to crush that. I like it. We've done I, our fair share. I think we should. Like just for fun. <laughs> it would be fun. Just like take one of like, you know, their boats on the off day or something. Yeah, I think it would be so fun. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, grab a drink, and we'll be back. And then we'll dive a little bit deeper into how in the world they got here. <laughs> so we'll see you in a second. <laughs> All right, we are back. Let's dive a little bit deeper into the juice. So how did you and Marty meet? I know you said like 16, but you were 16. I was 16. He's a little bit older. <laughs> but um, Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> <laughs> but they, my mom and Marty worked together at a company. And um, uh, the company had a softball team. And if your wife were there, the husband could play on the softball team. Oh. So my dad and Marty played on the softball team together. <laughs> And uh, I seen him, and like I said, he's a little older than me. And so I was younger then than I was when we started dating. And I was like, I'm going to marry him one day. That's what I'm going to do. i got to get a little older because he's a little bit older than me. But I'm going to marry him one day. So I did. You knew. I just knew it. And so I did. And uh, I had to kind of stalk. It's a stalking situation. <laughs> it was a stalking situation. Hey, it worked out. it's not stalking if he yeah. didn't know about it. He didn't know about it. And he, well, he kind of knew about it. He was like, okay, little girl. But, um. So it worked out for him though. Yeah, it, it did. It did. Him. I knew what was best. He for married him. up, even yeah, though you were right. younger. <laughs> yeah, he. Um, I knew what was best for him before he knew what was best for him. So we made it work. I finally. I, I waited till I got about sixteen, and you know, I was almost seventeen, and I was like, "It's time." It's time. But I had to get permission from my mom. Oh. <laughs> I was like, "Mama, please, I'm please." She's like, "He's too old for you." I'm like, "Please." So. So when did you guys get married? Well, I was eighteen when 18? I got married. He's older, like I said, but. Um, We've been married for uh, 25 years. Oh, yeah. congratulations. Years. What is that? The, isn't that paper anniversary or Sil is it silver? Silver, silver. yeah. Silver Ooh. anniversary. It's oh, a good one. A yeah, good that one. is yeah. a good it one. It was October, so it's really over 25 now. We're about halfway through the 26 now. Oh so. my gosh. So is he sappy romantic guy? I always ask because oh. I just like to know because on the water you can't really tell. No, he's super good. Like, I mean, I wouldn't say sappy romantic as far as like he ain't walking in the door with flowers all the time, but he's very attentive and yeah. very much loves me. Very pays me a lot of attention and oh. everything. He's, he's great. Good. And do you remember who said I love you first? Well, him because I was not going to say it first. <laughs> 
<laughs> Did you tell him he was going to take very, her? Yeah, I'm very old fashioned. I wasn't yeah. asking him out. I mean, I stalked him, yeah. but I got myself in the way of him. I still made him ask me out first. Yes. I just put myself in his face every time he turned around. <laughs> Here I am again. Yeah. I'm available. <laughs> yeah, I still, I'm still old fashioned, even though I stalked him behind the scenes. I like it. And then we kind of know like how you guys got into fishing. But when he said he wanted to be a professional fisherman, when did you actually yeah. find out like what that meant? Yeah. So he told me that, and I'm like, okay, sure. And he went fish. I'll tell you this: we never did Saturdays together. Ah, okay. okay. He's like, I fish on Saturday. Oh. We do Saturday night. Yeah. Or Friday night. Not the but day. Saturday was Saturday. And I mean, we went fishing together on Saturday. Right. I'm just saying there was it was fishing on Saturday. Time. Yeah. And so, but um. So I knew he meant he was serious about it. And so I never, I mean, I could tell how serious about it he was. So right. it was kind of always a thing. Always that, um, there. Yeah. Didn't know how we were going to do it yet. Yeah. Didn't know how we were going to do it yet. Yeah. <laughs> but once that came into play, it yeah. all fell, it all fell into it. Yeah. Yeah. So what's your go-to date night now? Do you have a go-to date night? Um, well, I tell you what, we're gone so much, we like being at home. Yes. Okay. We, and so we just built a barn dominium. So our Ooh. favorite thing to do is do something in the barn dominium. Yes. Like build the barn doors, slide barn, because we're still just doing all kinds yes. of stuff. Organizing, because we just moved into it. So we're still, we like to just. And making it home. Yeah. Because we did most of it ourselves, so we just still build and stuff. I like so he it. did. He did like. Up until 1.30 in the morning before he left for here, he finished the tile and the backsplash in the kitchen. Oh, what color did you go with? Or is he did it kind of like clear that? glass tile. Like, they're glass white tiles. Yes. They're glass. They're, it looks pretty good. Oh. It looks real good. I like it. I've seen so. some green ones that I really like. Yeah. Uh, play around with it. So, on the road, are you guys eating at home or eating at the Airbnb or do you guys eat out a lot? Yeah, no, we cook at the house if we're there. Um, Kenzie, you know, she cooks and stuff. If I'm not there, I cook if she's not there. However, Kenzie has not been traveling much this year, neither have I, so they've been um, eating out a lot. So when I was driving down here the other day, I went down here through practice and I called, and Marty was fishing, I called Casey, Marshall, and Jonathan, and I said, do y'all want to go eat tonight or y'all want me to stop and get some steaks? Please stop and get some food. Oh. They were missing getting cooked getting for, home. so, yeah, so I cooked good. when I got down here. So we definitely like to eat at the house. And I know y'all grew up as a family fishing, but do you and Marty go out and fish together yes. still? Yes. We do. Is we it do. still Saturdays? Mm -hmm. uh, it can be any day now. Yeah, no. you know, work for ourselves. Because <laughs> you can do whatever yeah. you want. But Saturdays is still for fishing. They still, yeah. um, him and the boys go on yeah. Saturdays together. And uh, uh, I don't like to go when it's below 50. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm like, I'll just Fair wait. weather I'm, fishing. I'm, yeah, yeah, I like to go when it's warmer. And so, um, but yeah, we, we all, I will say this, not to make everybody sad, but I got to thinking the other day. You know how when they were growing up, I always would say, this could be the last time, there's going to be a last time we ever do this. Mm -hmm. And I told them, I said, there's going to be a time where it's virtually impossible for all four of us to be in the same boat. Yes. Because y'all have your own boats, you're not going to want all of us to pack in the same boat. Yeah. So me and Mitchell were driving to Texas last week or two weeks ago, and I said, I can't remember the last time all four of us were in the same boat. Now we go all to the same lake and like compete against right. each other. But we'll everyone have, has their own We'll boat. have three boats. Yeah. Me and Marty will be against them and somebody else. You yeah. Know? And I'm like, um, I got sad because I said, I can't remember the last time we were all four in the same boat. Oh. And so I got scrolling through my phone. And we used to go to Florida every Christmas to fish after Christmas. And uh, we haven't went the past few years because we were building. Mm -hmm. And uh, so January 1st of 21 was the last picture I found with us all four in the same boat. Oh. I said, You no, have to I'm add sad. that in as a tradition. Yeah. Now I said, Next time we all go to the lake, we're going in the same boat. Yeah, yes. <laughs> They're like, At least for one day. <laughs> just one day, y'all. Just yeah. for all four of us to be in the same boat. I got pictures of us lined up in the boats together. But a year I'm like, over year. I'm like, I want, no, I just think oh, everybody's in their boat. boat. Oh, I'm oh. like, I want us all back in the same boat. Yeah. So, yeah, we do a lot of family fishing together. Oh, I do love that. What is your most memorable fishing or non-fishing memory that you guys have? It can be just you um, and Marty or y'all's whole family. I think I'm just going to keep it, stick it with fishing. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest with you, we don't do anything else. I know. We're, we're, I'm just not going to lie. Yeah, we like, are People tell couple. me all the time, don't you have something outside of fishing? I'm like, no. Mm -mm. But That's honestly, like, I don't want anything out of it I mean, either. If I had had a daughter that liked to go get her nails done, that's what we would have yeah, done. Yeah, but you but could I still didn't. do that on practice days. Yeah. I mean, I had boys, so I'll have my nails done. Yeah. I don't do that because I have boys, and so I just went fishing with the boys. So, yeah. whatever, just being together as a family is what makes me happy. So, I think my favorite memory we went down to St. John's River to meet Marty. He was coming up 
from maybe they had fished Toho or something. Uh-huh. And so I met him at St. John's River to fun fish. And it was probably been, I mean, not crazy, crazy long ago. Say six, seven, eight years ago, five, six years ago. I don't know. I'd say 2017. And because um, we ended up buying a house in Florida. This is why, that's uh. why the date popped in my head. <laughs> and we went down there to St. John's River. Marty loves St. John's River. And I mean, I wish one day the Bass Pro Tour would go there. We yeah, haven't been. Yeah, we haven't been. Um, yeah. We went there on the elites, and the elites still go there. And I, I don't want even to think go. the invitationals have been. No, I want to go to the St. John's River because our family loves to fish there. So we went out like Georgia's bed fishing season. Mm-hmm. And Marty's like, I'm going to put both kids on some big bass. And so he's pu- pu- push pulling around. Yes. He finds a giant on the bed here and a giant on the bed there. And like they both, two perfectly. Yes. Oh. So Mitchell's working this one. Oh my Marshall's gosh. working that one. And Marshall catches this one. It's a nine and a half. Holy and then Mitchell God. catches the other one and it's like a seven. It was just the most fun day. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah, they both were just Double ecstatic. Trouble. Yeah, it was. That's still what Marshall's. Are the odds? That's still Marshall's big bass. Because you know we live in South Carolina, so right. you're not going to catch a ten. No. The fish, the fish was. It wasn't quite ten, but it had this big giant old head. And so oh that's still gosh. Marshall's big bass. And it was just the. I mean, I remember how sunny it was. It was like seventy-five degrees, and it was like February or March, and I was just like, this, this is, is like a day. God day. Yeah, it's the greatest day. We all caught fish that day, but I was so excited for them. It was just, we got it all on video too. Oh. Marshall hates to play the videos because he gets a little psycho when he catches that fish and starts swinging all cotton. Just like, he's like so embarrassed by it. He's like, please don't play that video ever, ever. Or please put it on TikTok and share it to everyone. <laughs> I'll have to do it one day. Yes. He would kill me. He would kill me. Okay. We did share it back then on Marty's social media, so it pops up from time ah, to time. I might have to go searching. It's funny. It's so funny. So raising two boys in the middle of the busy life, what do you guys do to manage this like crazy life? I know you guys have kind of taking it on as a family but is yeah. there anything specific are you like a list person like how do you how do you manage no. that like others might be able to take a piece of yeah i'm not the one <laughs> uh i'm not the one to talk about managing i am not organized and i am, i'm an organized mess i know where everything's at hey einstein was too like He's it's brilliant. just like we're spontaneous yeah. it's, it's hard for me to organize because they don't stick to my organization if i or if i was, did it they'd be yeah i was a planner when i met marty yeah and it got exhausting so we don't plan yeah when, other than just making sure they have somewhere to stay when yeah. they get there and the boat plug is in yeah there's not a plan there's not much of a plan i'm I just like gonna it. say we don't know what we're doing tomorrow honestly though that's that's good too yeah it is good yeah, it I'm needs to be a little that, bit like that yeah <laughs> you don't you don't want me to make you an organization chart or nothing it's not working so for we can train fishermen yes you i was about to say over. you're just you're just a we fishing will, school we will teach them how to fish but you, you know, really should start charging i know it's, it's day on the water i even have a lot of them they're like but how do they do interviews so well like they're like way beyond their years in interviews and this is a funny story for you i said well you know when little girls are pretending to be teachers? I said, my kids were pretending to weigh in. Yeah. <laughs> like, I would buy minnows. I hope PETA's not watching. I would buy minnows and let them put them in the bathtub with them. And they would sit there and hold them up and be like, <laughs> 10 little- pounds, 7 ounces. And they would interview each other. Yeah. So, hey, now they're good at interviewing. And high school and fishing. they are interviews. good at interviewing. Like, they anytime they speak, they are very good at they interviewing. They are. They know They know what they want to say. They know yes. what they're talking about. Have thought through the thought. Yeah. Like, they're not tripping over it. They actually mm-hmm. acknowledge their sponsors. Yeah. Like, it's it's very good. Yeah, and they're not shy. Shocker. <laughs> <laughs> they're not shy because we're not shy. So, they're not shy. No, I think it's good. Yeah. <laughs> Do you... Mm-hmm. Find time for yourself during tournament season. And what's something you do Mm-mm. that is no, for yourself? I do not. <laughs> There's nothing. Hey, at no, least you're honest. No time for me. I no. Know. I mean, but I'm good with that. Yeah. I just be funny. I don't do anything outside of fishing. Yeah. I, I get like a lot it. of people that like just, they're like, you need something yourself. I'm like, not if I'm enjoying it. No. I, I, yeah. uh, completely. Like it. Yeah. The buck stops if you're not having a good time anymore. Yeah. But as long as you're enjoying it, like that is your time for yourself too. Yeah, I mean, I just enjoy. I enjoy seeing them happy. Yeah, nothing's more fun than than seeing them do well. Uh, I do cheer harder for the boys than Marty. <laughs> In case that's not a question, I do. I don't know why, because obviously I don't get their money. I get his. Yeah, I don't get their money. But uh, I just. But you had them. them. 
You yeah. know, like they they're yeah. they're part of you. They're part of me. And you he's chose the same way. Marty, but they're yeah. part of you. He's the same way. I told him last night, I said, um, you know that if I had to choose which one of y'all to have the best week this week, it's Marshall. He said, I know. <laughs> and I'm like, I just want him. I feel like uh, Marty, um, you know, I don't want them to have to, sh- I mean, I don't mind them struggling a little bit because it makes you appreciate right. it. But I just want them to come out swinging. I yes. do want them to have a lot of success. Yeah. And fast. I mean, I want it just to come. I don't want them to have to, you know, I don't want them to have to worry about as much running home, making sure they get that next job done. I want the yeah. fishing to sustain them. and. I just want him to have a real successful career. So I feel like you would feel like that about Marty if yeah. uh, he wasn't as successful as he currently is on and yeah. off the water. Yeah, because I don't think a lot of people realize Marty's 50. Um, he doesn't really necessarily look it. No, Everybody he doesn't. He's <laughs> I yeah. thought he was younger. Yeah. I thought him and Casey Ashley were the same age. Yeah, no, actually. Casey's 10 years younger than Marty. Oh, shoot. So he just turned 40. 40. So we've given him a hard time about that. I told him he's catching me. He said he'll never catch me. I'm like, no, once you turn 40, it's all the same. It's all the okay, same. You've caught me. So anyway, um, because I'm in my 40s. But uh, yeah, Marty, I feel like he's successful in life and he knows it. Just he's had a good life. I mean, his kids could not have made him more happier than they've made him. He never pushed them to fish. Like, well, I guess we let them. We let them. But like... Oh, it's like a direction. group activity. Yeah. yeah, and so he never said they had to. So actually, he, you know, he's obviously tickled. Nothing he loves more than traveling with the boys. Oh my gosh, that makes him happy. And letting them fish and Marshall yeah. being out here with him right now. He wants Mitchell out here. He's just loving it. But he's successful. And we say all the time, don't wait until you're retired to, to do live. the things you want to do because um, you need to do the thing. I, if he says all the time, he said, if I died today, I did everything I ever wanted. And so, I mean, he's, it's, it's a good thing. We really feel that way. And uh, so the boys, I do cheer harder for them. That's kind of what I was saying, because I want them to accomplish so much so fast and just, uh, because they do appreciate it. They love it. They, um, they watch Marty do it a hard way. They don't for a second take for granted the fact that we've helped get them out there a lot quicker than if they had had to go do it all by themselves. So when people are critical saying, Oh, their daddy bought them that and their daddy bought them this. And I'm like, you just want your kids to succeed. They're not hateful brats. They're yeah. appreciative. They love it. Um, yeah, you're going to do everything you can. Well, and they're probably doing it for their kids too, yeah. just in a different in a, way. Yeah, it's a different so, sport. It's different. Or, I mean, yeah. people spend thousands on yeah. baseball and football and everything. You just, you're going to do what you can to yeah. help them succeed, especially when you know they're good people. Um, you know, they work hard. They appreciate what you do for yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, Matt had to sleep in cars to get you know to tournaments yeah. to make it work, but he would never want that for anyone else. Yeah, just because exactly. he did it doesn't mean exactly. someone else needs to do it to That's appreciate right. it the same. It's just That's right. Okay, so during tournament season, do you watch live? Um, I'm just gonna be completely honest. Um, only if my family's on it. Yep. I just, I mean, if somebody will say, oh my, like this morning. Um, Somebody said, there's a drone on Marty. And I'm like, oh, my God, okay, yeah, that. <laughs> I went and signed on to it. But um, I think it stresses me out mm-hmm, to, to watch, watch other live. people. And, um, I mean, I'll check in on it from time to time. Now, I watch the score checker religiously. Same. But um, I really just watch live if I think the boys are going to be on it. Yeah. Yeah. I might check out, like, um, I think, uh, like, if Casey or Johnny, somebody, like, I'll check in and see how they're doing. If yeah. I think they've got a camera on them, I'll check in. But. Um, yeah, no, I just, I'm so busy. I'm like, if hey, it's not I, for one day, I'm just gonna. I'm the same way. Yeah. I like to watch Matt and I like to watch like a couple other people, but yeah. really it stresses me out if I'm watching someone else and like Matt is, you know, either yeah. struggling or having a good day or in, anything. Yeah. Like I, I don't like it. I just like to watch him. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, like, yeah. But I do love score tracker. I check that thing all the time. But see, I'm just a, I'm one of those people like on social media I would rather read posts than watch videos. Yeah, I do like. And it's opposite for a lot of people. Yeah, so I um, I like the lot, like I like all of the offerings, but I like. So I knew nothing about bass fishing when I came into this with Matt, and at the very beginning, they didn't have live on the FLW. Um, they did pictures and then the blog they would update the yeah. blog and you would search for you like their that. name. Yeah. yeah, I loved that because I could like follow along but it wasn't like you know totally yeah. sucking if that makes sense like energy meaning I could just yeah. like I, I really liked it yeah. they kind of gave descriptions of patterns and stuff and they do that a little bit with like the gallery updates but yeah. it's not throughout the day but I do yeah. I like it I'm more of a read post and look at pictures than watch um, reels like TikToks or anything oh, yeah? like that I'm still just a ah. scroll and read posts so I guess I'm old school it's I like 
So if Marty isn't on, is your other angler that you would watch, like Casey or Jonathan? Yeah. And can you watch in front of the other wives? Uh, I guess I could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing what you know now, what is something that you wish you knew when you started this whole journey? That would have either made it like easier to handle or just like more fun that you kind of figured out along the way? Oh gosh, I guess I wish, and I don't know if I could fix this. I wished I could like get through the day without stressing about it. I wished I could just watch it and not be that worried about it and just remind myself it's really small in the grand scheme of life yeah. how many fish they catch today. I know it's big to them, it's big to us too, but I think as you get older and you lose people you love and all, you're like, I'm stressing about this way too much. I you know. Way too much. I don't think I've asked God for more than, or more things a single time than big fish. Yeah. I know, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? And I'm like, and I, have to, I like apologize all the yeah. time. I'm like, I know that this is like literally yeah. like non-existent yeah. in your knee, in your <laughs> issues that you got <laughs> answering, but like, yeah. please. <laughs> well, you put so much into it and you worry about it so much. And at the end of the day, it's like, it wasn't near as, first of all, worrying didn't fix nothing. Yeah. Sure. Didn't make him catch a bigger bass. Yeah. And you just stressed about it. And at the end of the day, it's okay. It's going to be okay. Yeah. Do you find you stress more than he does? Yeah. 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 I just asked him, like, can you stress on the water? He said, we don't have time to stress on the water. Yeah. Now it's very, like, even keel, and yeah. I'm, like, a hyper. Well, we're there, like, yeah. doing nothing Te while we're watching. They're busy. They're yes. not going to stress as much when they're actually working. Yeah, like, we can't do anything so. to help, it's necessarily. Best to go, it's best to go mop the floor or yeah. something. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, and stress about it. And then for a new lady, a part of the fishing family, what is the best piece of advice? So, like, future daughter-in-laws... What advice do you give them coming into this? Okay, so if I just thought to my own daughter-in-laws, I just want them to um, to be supportive and to... Um, do you have daughter-in-laws? I don't have... I'm saying for my future daughter -in -laws. Oh, okay, okay. They're not married yet. Marshall, yeah. Marshall and his girlfriend, oh, I, I would see them get married in the future. Yeah. Maybe even Mitchell and his, they're younger because, you know, they're yeah. just... But they've both been dating the same girls for a long time, especially Marshall and Abigail's been together... I think almost three years. Oh, yeah. So she's got to see a lot. She's got to travel with us a lot and everything. Good. And so um, she knows what she knows. Happening. And I try to tell her and show her um, that that uh, just be supportive of them. And like, um, it's not all rainbows and sunshine. They're gonna have really bad tournament days, but yeah. the highs outweigh the lows. But there's low lows and there's high highs. And, yeah, everything um, in between. You just have to be supportive and um, just keep letting them chase the dream. If, and if you don't want that, then Please. Run because let me tell you, my boys are. They're. They, I tell them they're, they're not worse. changing. They're yes. not changing. Yes. They're worse than um, Marty ever had time to be. Like yeah. I, they, this was their mind. I said me and Marty used to go to the lake without fishing rods. Like we would go and fun. And then hang out. They were like, you didn't even take one. I'm like, no, we don't do that anymore. But like when we were dating, we literally would go to the lake and he wouldn't have. A, he'd be like, oh, I wish I had a fishing rod with me. And uh, can you imagine yeah, going to the lake no. without a fishing rod? I bring a floaty and I attach myself to Matt's yeah. boat, but he is fishing. Yeah. I'm floating. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just tell him, like, listen, this life has been fun yeah. and you're going to enjoy it. Just support him and just hang on for the ride because it takes it takes me places I would have never been. Mm -hmm. I mean, because uh, we would be like, they were fishing Buffalo. We went to Niagara Falls, you know. Yeah. When they were fishing Toho the first time I'd ever been down there, I went to Disney World. You know, yeah. I mean, you just, it's just a lot. That you, and then sometimes you end up in the middle of nowhere. And yeah. You just, cook and lay out in the sun on the deck yes, but either exactly. way you have a lot of fun and i really would recommend it to anybody as and as long as you're you don't mind just being a support team like that i've yeah. enjoyed it i've enjoyed it I, I love it too um so last question and then we'll wrap up a few quick hits so what are you most proud of and this is Britt because i had missy on here but what are you most proud of that you and marty have accomplished together it could be fishing or non-fishing related because no, I know you I'm, have another company. I'm just really proud of our boys. Uh, that's what our biggest accomplishment together. They are Christians. They're good boys. They treat people well. They have positive attitudes. They just uh, enjoy life, and then they're just good. And I'm like, that's our greatest accomplishment, yeah. that, that we raise likable, likeable. likeable little humans. <laughs> likeable, hardworking hard little humans, working. especially they've got now. A good, they've got a good uh, head on their shoulders. <laughs> yeah, that's we're proud of our boys. That's our most proud. That's good. Yeah. So we're going to wrap up with a few okay. quick hits. So what is your PB and where did you catch it? Uh, seven one <gasps> on Lyman Lake, the little lake yes. I told you we lived on. For, I've caught several. Oh, I thought it was lemon. Lyman. Lyman. Okay, I'll uh -huh. have to tell Matt. Because yep. I was looking at it on the thing. I was like, can we go to Lemon? Because <laughs> there's like 
lemon and kiwi. Kiwis in North Carolina. Kiwi. It's like, we need to go to all the little fruits. <laughs> yeah, ki- kiwi is our closest lake to us where we live. Oh. And big lake. Kiwi. Yes. And um, Lyman's the small water. It's like a watershed lake. Okay. And so that's, I caught several the sevens. I had like six, 15, six, 14, seven, a lot of oh. sevens in there. But I had a seven one out of Lyman Lake. Dang. Mm-hmm. And what is your go to show or movie? Um, I like murder. Oh, okay. I like it. I don't like murder. That's not what I meant. That's I like a lie. watching murder to be solved. I watch ID, the ID channel. Okay. I feel like that's a woman thing. Were you into like, it. yeah, I mean, it is the book that I'm reading right now you would love. It's yeah. called The Butcher and the Wren, and it's literally yeah. that. It's, I really hate to watch murder. I think we've lost it again. Um, I think we were talking about murder, so do you want to <laughs> go back to that? <laughs> yeah, I didn't mean that I like murder. I like to watch murders being solved, okay? True crime stuff. I like true crime stuff. ID channel all day. Yes. <laughs> no, I don't watch much at all, um, but when I do, yeah, that's what I do. What about, can you back a boat? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I back everybody in. But yeah. anyway, uh, when I was 17, uh, me and Marty went late together. It was July 4th. And he said, um, do you want to put the boat on the trailer or you want to go get the truck and back it in? I said, neither. Yeah. And he said, well, you got to do one. I can't do a boat. I don't want to do a boat, but yeah. I got somebody with me. Because you know you know how you pull up the ramp and you see one guy doing everything yes, and everybody's and it takes in the boat. Forever, forever. And they're all looking at and, him. And uh, he said, you don't want to be that person. I'm like. Okay, well, okay. I don't know how to drive this boat, so I'm going to go get the truck, which was a bad decision. It would have been a lot easier to, to drive the boat, the boat on the trailer. So I went up there, can't even explain the embarrassment that I experienced and while he's setting the boat like this right here. And just watch. And watch. He don't get, he don't get out of frame. That don't bother him. He, he's one didn't do it until you figure yeah. it out. He didn't give me any advice. So anyway, um, I cried, and uh, some random guy backed it in for me. Aww. And so I went home. Set me up some. I don't even remember what he used. Cause it's not like it's not like I had orange cones. Yeah. Set me up some stuff. And you figured it out. I figured it out. I said I never want to be in that position again. Mm-mm. And so you know, here we are, 28 years later. So what we generally do, it's so funny. If like if I'm traveling and Marshall and Marty are both here, we'll go to the ramp. Like I didn't have to this week. I got my own truck here, yeah. so I didn't take him the ramp this week. But <laughs> um, they'll pull up in the parking lot. I'll go put Marty in, come park beside where Marshall's sitting, I then go put Marshall in. in. I like it. Cool. Yeah. No, yeah. I like it. I put Matt in every morning, too. But he yeah. kind of threw me to the wolves at Okeechobee, so that's how yeah. I learned. You got to learn quick when you realize you don't want to be yeah. embarrassed. But I actually didn't want to do the boat because it's such a banana peel that I, like, was worried I would run it up into the back yeah. of the truck. So I was like, I want no part of the money-making yeah. part of this operation. <laughs> I can fix the truck, can't really fix the boat. Yeah. Okay, if y'all played Uno together with a group of people and you had to draw four card, would you play it on Marty or wait until you got a reverse and play it on somebody else? So we're stupid competitive, so whoever had the best shot at beating me at the yeah. time is who is you getting play that. it on. Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah, we don't like play favorite, you know, we're not like a favorite. Nice. Yeah. yeah, we're not being nice. It's, it's all about winning. <laughs> I like and that. I would say we're all super competitive, but I would say Mitchell takes the cake. Uh, competitiveness. Yes. He's the worst. We don't like to play games with him. He's the flip the board over. <gasps> really? He's the psycho. My sister used to cry if she didn't get boardwalk, yeah. so normally we started yeah. playing with, like, not Uno, but Monopoly. Yeah. So to be honest with you, I probably wouldn't play it on Mitchell because I don't yeah. want to see that reaction. I'd be like, because nobody likes, we didn't like, Wiffle Ball ended up in fights, Backyard Football ended up in fights. The good thing about fishing, he's in the boat by himself. Yes. And he... Is fishing against the fish, and he knows it. He doesn't get mad at the other anglers, you know. Oh, that's good. He's just like he knows it's all up to him. Yeah. So he does better with fishing than board it games. Is, it sports. is a very you against you sport. It is you against you. Yeah. When he's playing on a team, he's liable to really get upset <laughs> at his teammates. So we just don't even no. team sports. Are single not sports. Him. He's a single sport. You get golf and fishing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's One more thing before you leave. Um, I'm taking this from another podcast, actually Mercer's podcast. But what is a question you have for our next guest without knowing the next guest? Um, I think, uh, so I wear these earrings. It's the little, I, they were given to us uh, one year at a, ba- at a Bassmaster tournament. There was a, a woman in the oh. town of St. Lawrence River. Yeah. She made all of the ladies these bass, bass earrings. earrings. There's, so they're all bass awesome. fish. So I wear them at all the bass tournaments. So is there something just special that you wear to bass fishing tournaments? I like that. I like that. Uh, I'll wear them a little I bit out, that. but I don't. But mostly just for here. for bass fishing. Yeah, tournaments. I like your shoes. Too. Yeah, I do have bass fishing <laughs> shoes on. Too. They're just hey dudes though, and 
by the way, they don't make this in the women's, but I yep. have a giant foot because I'm tall. And so you can I, do the I men's. can do it. I can do the men's. I like it. So. Is there anything else? This isn't in here, but is there anything else that you wanted to say before we leave? You um, don't have to. I think to. we covered a ton. Yeah, we did. So I think we covered a lot. So I just, I had fun. I appreciate it. I hope this, uh, I don't know, let some people see what it's like to be. Yeah. They probably have no clue some of the stuff we do. Like, um, it's, it's a lot. So yeah. I do think that um, it's hard for these anglers to be successful if they don't have the support at home. Yeah. And so I think it's uh, a huge deal. I know that, yeah, I know it makes a huge difference. I think them. so too. So that is our show this week. Thank you so much for being here. If people want to follow you or any of your fishermen this year, where can they find them? So they all have, you know, their um, social media pages, but I started TikTok. I'm glad you asked that. I started TikTok, and it's called M3 Fishing. M3, oh, like M yes. for Marty Marshall Mitchell. I told him it should have been M to the fourth with Mommy. Yeah, with Mommy. <laughs> oh. But I didn't do that to him. They're like, stop. <laughs> but um, M3 Fishing, I started TikTok. It's from my point of view. Yes. You know, like I there's things they won't post on their social yeah. media that I will. So I love I, it. I've got some, it's fun. So some little like bloopers in the behind the scenes Yeah, I'm going to do some behind the scenes. I've, I've, I'm doing some stuff. So I, like I just it. started it. So M3 Fishing. M3 Fishing. M3 fishing. Perfect. And um, again, I love all the women behind professional bass fishing because like she just said, like really they can't do what they can do without what doing what we do behind the scenes so I really think it's important to just see that it is really a family sport um it takes a whole village uh so I just want you guys to be able to meet and see and encourage and learn uh who is behind that village so if you have any questions you want me to ask or any guests you'd like me to have on, please comment them below. I plan to do one episode a week through 2024, so um, make sure to subscribe to follow along, and we will see you next time. Bye! Bye. <laughs>